Hey gang, hey, welcome back. Today we're with Dr. A, the uh, author and the creator of the Habits of Health Transformational System. And if you're just arriving here on Facebook Live, hey, we'd love to see a comment or a question and anything that you would love to hear Dr. A talk about, please share that. We may not get to it today during our live session, but we may get to it in a future session. So Dr. A, hey, it's Monday. It's a new start to a new week. We uh, look forward to what you have to share with us today. Great. Thank you, David, and welcome, everybody, and I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. And if you're not, please sequester yourself or seek medical device because we want to make sure that we all get through this as safe and as healthy as we can. So with that, David, I'd like to start tonight uh, basically just by reflecting. You know, we just had another weekend. We're right in the midst of uh, the accelerative, what what they say is the steep curve of this uh, pandemic, and uh, people are settling in. Uh, to their circumstances. And uh, I think we're all wondering, you know, when is this going to end? And when is this, when is life going to go back to normal? Uh, and there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is um, that this will end. And the, the bad news is that it will never go back to the way it was before. In fact, this is kind of a wake up call for all of us uh, to take responsibility for our health, our lives, our well being. You know, we've kind of somehow projected over the years with technology and governments and organizations we belong to and, and having medical care that somehow we weren't responsible for ourselves and for our health. And so for me, it, it's never been a more important time for us to, to kind of wake up, raise our hand and say, you know what, I'm responsible for my health and well-being. Uh, and you know what, I may not have been there to where I need to be. I'm a human. I'm stressed out. This, this, is, this took me sideways. Uh, and what am I going to do about it? And what I would hope everybody would do about it is actually make the decision that they're gonna take responsibility. And what I mean by that, take responsibility for the current circumstances, but also say, I'm never gonna let myself feel like I'm a victim to anything else that ever happens to me in life. And I think that's a, a great place to start. We all can start working on our, our minds, on our physical health, on our well being, uh, and making sure we're learning from this example, uh, because you know what we in essence do, and what you know I've been doing now for almost 20 years, David, is responding rather than reacting to disease. You know, one of the things as uh, one of the pioneers in critical care is uh, I took care of very sick people and used high Star Wars technology to keep people from a lot uh, from dying, but I never really helped anybody create optimal health in their life. And I've never seen a more important time for us to kind of wake up and take responsibility for our own lives and our own health. Uh, and this is the time for that to happen. So while we're sequestered at home, we can start now developing the habits, what I call the habits of health, which can allow people now to move forward and be in better health, be better prepared, be better prepared uh, mentally, be better prepared physically, as well as a state of alertness so I can handle adversities that comes in the future and actually uh, thrive with it. Fantastic. Well, we're getting lots of comments and questions coming in on the, uh, the comment section of the Facebook Live. If you're watching this live, please throw a comment or question in there. But while those questions are coming in, Dr. A, I thought it might be helpful for everybody to understand that they can go to the habitsofhealth.com website and click underneath system resources for lots of great free resources. And there's a great blog with lots of great posts from Dr. A. But I thought it might be helpful today on a Monday to talk a little bit about the idea of you know, putting the right things into the jar. You used the concept of a mason jar as a way to kind of organize the macro habits of health to move people away from the habits of disease. And I thought maybe you can kind of walk them through the, the process and the story that you tell inside of your habits of health book and the life book. Yeah, one of the key things is to, you know, in life and just simply in business, people are always promoting the thing that's going to take care of everything. And when you hear that, you should run as fast as you can because there is no one thing outside of it that's gonna make everything all right inside of us. In fact, the thing that I've done over the last two decades is study what really makes the difference. And the things you just put up there, the six key macro habits are the key areas, the six key areas in our life that we all have control over, we all can make changes in, we can all learn new habits in, and we can actually define how we're going to move forward within reason. Obviously, we can never predict how long we're going to live or, uh, you know, a potential for an accident. But as a whole, we know this. We know if we adopt these six major macro habits, we have a better likelihood of becoming optimally healthy 
and live or living a longer, healthier life than if we don't. And these macro habits are not something that we sell or tell. They are actually physical things that you do to help support your physical and your mental and the rest of your life. I mean, these are things, decisions. We make 140 food decisions every day, but the majority of people, the majority of them they make are not healthy. So there's just little things that make all the difference. And so the idea is if we put the big rocks in first, the things that really matter, this story came, I, I adopted this story from a college, a story of a college professor that came in and basically had a mason jar with rocks in it, big rocks like this. And he asked the, uh, his students if they could put any more, anything else in it. And the students looked at it and says, no, it's full. So he pulled out pebbles and put a whole bunch of pebbles in it and shook it up and filled it up with the pebbles. Then he says, is it full? And they looked at it again and said, yeah. And then he took out sand and shook the sand into it. And then they say, is it full? And it was up to the top of sand. And he then took out water and filled it full of water. So the reality is, and what we know is, the big rocks need to go in first yet. You know that. If you, if you try to put in, it's just like, you know, in your cooler in your, when you're going out and going on a, a boating trip or something, you can't put all the ice in first because you can't get the stuff in. You got to put the stuff in and then put the ice over. Well, the same thing here. These six macro habits are the key six areas. And what's, what's nice about it at a time like this, many of the resources that we've developed, David, are free. And one of them is this. It's the app that has the six macro habits and you can unlock them and work on them. The habitshealth.com site, as you said, has many of these charts. It talks about stop, challenge, and choose and has exercises and things you can do from home. All this free uh, because we want to make sure that we're not putting any undue burden on anybody. But these are all things we can do uh, to start working on ourselves. And what I can tell you this, the most important thing for our mental health is to stay busy and to be doing things that move us forward to help us. So what's great about the Habits Health System and these six macro habits, David, is if we make a decision to start putting these into our jar before we fill our, our day full of all these things that really don't matter, that's how we progressively change. You know, people say, well, I'm overwhelmed. I'm at home. Well, then pull out the Habits of Health clock. Look at how you start your day, how you finish your day. Make sure you have eight hours of sleep in the middle of it. And then start there. Start with the building blocks that are most important. Habits of healthy sleep and energy management are one of those six key macro habits. What about your weight? That's a, the weight management is a key macro habit. How you eat and handle hydration, that's a key macro habit. How you move, that's a key macro habit. How you basically uh, handle your stress, how you help uh, focus on making your mind a safe, healthy place and not a dangerous place to be. That's a macro habit, then obviously our surroundings. So all these things are capable uh, for people and it's, it's something that we love to share because everybody has the opportunity to make their home more optimal than it is now. Dr. A, there's a question in the chat message that has to do with just um, having a struggling weekend. Uh, there was a weakening weekend and you know all of the ha macro habits kind of went out of the jar. And the good news is they can put them right back into the jar. So would you talk to those people that are watching today that maybe just didn't have a, a good solid week or weekend, or maybe it's been months or even years of unhealthy living, how they can go ahead and just take today as a great place to start and just put those macro habits back into the jar. Yeah, no, I think that's really important, David. And it's a process. It's like uh, going to the physical gym, going to the mental gym. All these things are, we, we break them down to micro habits, which means we make them small enough so you can work on them daily and add just to lead yourself in the right direction. We, we're human. And during stress, we're going to do bonehead things. We're going to do things that comfort us that aren't in our best health. We're going we're to sit on the couch and watch some stressful or scary movie that we shouldn't, we know we shouldn't watch but we just did it because we're human. So that's not the point here. The point is not that we're human. The point is that we can get better because we are human. It's because we can think, because we can control, because we can observe our behaviors. We can observe how we think and how we feel, and we can change those things. And so, you know, in our life, pretty much, if you, you know, sum this down, I'm going to do a, uh, uh, obviously, uh, some training this weekend. And one of the things I'm going to talk about, how do we, how, how does this issue, this COVID-19 pan epidemic, how do I come out of this in a better place than I was before, right? Because, you know, it's not a good thing. We're not happy about it. I'm not happy that it's happened. I don't think anybody's happy it's happened. But the bottom line is it's happened. And so what we need to do is look at it as a wake-up call and how am I responding to this to make sure I move forward? And the way to do that, Dave, is exactly what you said. No, you're not, you can't learn all six, everything all at once. And it's not about becoming perfect. 
It's about deciding in your life. So the question I would ask everybody, what is the one thing I can do now, right now, that can have the most impact on my health or my well-being, which includes your mental health? And what is the one thing I can do right now that I can stop doing that will have the biggest impact? And that, that, that change, that adding one thing and removing one thing is not just a small improvement, that is a quantum improvement. So just pick one thing that you can start doing and then decide to do it and then add it, go through, you know, you can go into the Habit Self Transformational System. It'll show you how, if you have a coach, ask them uh, and then decide which thing I'm going to stop doing. And th those two things, just making two small changes in our life, making a decision to do, do that or not do that every day takes about two months. But by the time we come out of this, uh, you'll be in better shape and better prepared for the future better prepared in terms of your health and well-being and better prepared to now be uh, an advocate and someone that can then help others be successful. Well, there is this great macro habit tracker inside of the habitsofhealth.com website underneath system resources. Towards the bottom of the page, you can download this and use this as an opportunity to reflect on what is the most important habit that you want to focus on. And then you can download additional resources on that page to help you to jumpstart your week. But Dr. A, is there any other final uh, thoughts that you can share with folks to just really get them off to a great motivational start here on a Monday? Yeah, I think the most important thing is work on yourself. You know, we need to be there for others, but when we're psychologically not right, if we're just incessantly worrying, we can't be at our best for others because people will see that. So I think it's really important. I talked about this last week, but I think it's more important than ever. If there's something that's really got you sideways, reach out to someone that you mentor with and talk to them. Talk to them about it, figure out, find out what's real and what's not real. See, we have a tendency to think that our thoughts and our feelings are real. They're not us. They are simply things we're experiencing. They could be because of our programming. They could be because of this crazy upside down world that's stimulates something you hadn't thought about or had to do in a long time. But whatever it is, we have the ability to go in as humans and expand our minds by thinking about what's going on stop, challenge why I'm feeling this way, and then choose an outcome that can move you forward. And that in itself, just going to the mental gym, even if you go as little as one minute a day, just focus on your breathing. Since what, what am I feeling? What state am I in right now? Am I, am I in joy? Am I elated? Am I upset? Am I fearful? Am I anxious? What state am I in? And then ask myself, is that serving me? Is it serving you? And the most time is yes, from a precautionary note, if you're concerned that the virus could penetrate into your family and you need to have social separation, uh, order in your food you know, uh, through a service, those are all good things. Those are things that are showing, yes, there's a risk concern, I need to take care of it. But beyond that, you wanna be strong for your family, you wanna be strong for yourself, and the way to do that is examine yourself, sense those emotions, let those emotions go through you. Don't repress those, deal with those emotions, and let them go through you. Because remember, as Teddy Roosevelt said it a long time ago, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And a lot of the emotional stuff we have is perceived in perception. It's not real. And we've, if we focus on it, we'll basically put ourselves in a position where we can hurt our health simply by worrying. So with that, instead, let's focus on doing what we can do, knowing the difference, and then focus the time to build our relationships with our family. Spend this time to talk to your parents. Spend this time to play games and do things, to do projects. And most importantly, the one project that's more important than anything is work on yourself. Make a decision. I'm going to change and start doing one thing I wasn't doing, and I'm going to stop doing one thing I know that will help move me forward. And together, that's a great start. And remember, in little baby steps, everything becomes a reality. So David, thank you so much for helping me with this. For everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and looking forward to talking to you soon. See yeah, for those of you that are uh, liking these videos, be sure to like this page and share this video with other people that you think would benefit. And there is some special announcements coming up this weekend. Dr. Anderson had a live event that was in Miami. They got rescheduled for a virtual event. And if you'd like to participate in some of the public events that he's organized for anyone and everyone to attend for free, please reach out to the person that shared this video with you to get more information and the login information. Thanks, Dr. A, and thanks, everybody. See you guys soon.